Certain names are synonymous with civil rights. Martin Luther King Jr., Rosa Parks. But there are major figures who shy away from the spotlight, like Jerome Smith, a New Orleans native who 55 years ago played a pivotal role in getting the Civil Rights Act of 1964 passed. In a rare one-on-one -on -one television interview, our Carice Jackman sat down with Mr. Smith. Carice? That's right, Ton. It was just a humbling experience to sit down with such a humble man. Now, Mr. Smith talked about his years in the movement, the highs and the lows, and a very special meeting with Robert F. Kennedy that spearheaded major change in America. Intrame walks a figure as important as he is imposing. Good morning, everybody. And throughout town, Jerome Smith is known as Big Duck, because wherever he goes, he has a line of kids following him around like little ducklings. This is a celebration of Mandela. This is the, the music band off of Hunters Field. Wherever he goes, See, Smith takes his memories with him. Doris Castle and Julia Aaron, just the lady that brought tears to Dr. King's eyes. Wow. Smith and the women in this picture aren't just friends, they're pioneers. And each time we were in a situation where we survived, and that and, and made me feel to be thankful for somebody's prayer. His journey into history began at an early age, on a much shorter trip. So one day I was coming from plane, and uh, going, coming, going up in the seven ward. So when I got on that street car, I just sat down, and the white folks on there, they went crazy. Conductor started cussing me. Two or three folks said I needed my behind beaten and this, that, and other. This black woman came up to me, slapped me side my neck, grabbed me by my shirt, made me go by that back door and say, I'm gonna fix him, I'm gonna make him beat, make him get a beating for disrespecting y'all. When she grabbed me, slapped me, I said, oh, mean woman beating on me, you know? And when she got that, she did grab me and she said something like a prayer and she was crying. She said, God wants you to do this. I ain't stopped yet. He never forgot her. Once he enrolled at Southern University, his passion for justice took off. I was reading all Dr. King stuff, a lot about Kwame and Krumah from Ghana and all in our rooms. We was hungry because we knew what other college kids were doing. All right, and so that enabled us to be prepared. And then it just wasn't a matter of going to jail. It was a matter of accepting that, period. He participated in sit-ins at Woolworths on Rampart and Canal Street and got involved with the organization Congress of Racial Equality, also known as CORE. In 1961, Smith joined several men and women, black and white, in what became known as the Freedom Rides, a series of bus trips across the South. The group made several stops, protesting against segregated bus terminals. Out of those experiences, I mean, we I wind up, oh my goodness, going back to Baton Rouge, went to jail in Baton Rouge, went down in uh, 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 the Carolinas, all through Mississippi. During those rides, buses were set on fire. Passengers were attacked. While in Mississippi, Smith was beaten by a white man with brass knuckles. This is Birmingham, the South's mightiest industrial city. There were times where the beatings, the attacks on activists, the bombings, the lynchings, and the killings of people in the movement became unbearable. They had to murder a lot of people, and I'll be telling the kids, Sometimes, just think about if you would be a mother and then you had to go to the church and, and the church done been blown up and there's a brick in your daughter's head. I had to think about those mothers. Some people can get hurt, innocent people that don't have anything to do with this. It's those mothers and countless others who fought and died that stayed with Smith during a historic meeting with Attorney General Robert F. Kennedy in May 1963. A 25-year-old Smith joined novelist James Baldwin, actor Harry Belafonte, singer Lena Horne, and others. Unlike his peers, Smith didn't sugarcoat his struggle. You know, I told him it didn't mean nothing for me to be there. It was nothing I would clap for to meet with him or his brothers. They asked me to come, my friends, and so that's why I went. And that you will, you will not understand me until you understand that uh, madness is colorblind. 
Smith says what really upset Kennedy was when he told him he would never fight against Cuba or join the military, when right here on American soil, blacks weren't being treated with respect and dignity. Smith says Kennedy was troubled by his bluntness, but the African-American leaders in the room told Kennedy if there's anyone the administration needed to listen to, it's Jerome Smith. But and what really got him, his brother died about five months or so after that. And then I was speaking in spiritual things in terms of that then, you know. And really, that's, he entered a, a world that he had never touched that way. My fellow Americans, I am about to sign into law the Civil Rights Act of 1964. His honesty eventually led to the Civil Rights Act being passed the following year. In those moments, it's not, you know, folks think you're brave. It's about a collective strength. So I wasn't in there with him by myself. I was in there with all these people. Every people I don't been to jail with. That's the spirit I come in the room with. And I ain't gonna come on his territory, all right, and try to define my poison in his space. I'm gonna be my poison. Today, Jerome Smith still fights for justice. He talks to the youth at the Treme Center in Hunter's Field. They recite Amazing Grace and Billie Holiday's haunting songs about lynchings, Strange Fruit. From the poplar tree. He teaches them about civil rights legends, both locally and internationally, and the sacrifices they made. The Civil Rights Act makes 55 years this year. Mm -hmm. How far do you think we've come and are you satisfied at all? Or do you think we should, we should be better than uh -huh. where we are right now? Technically, in ways there's been some improvement, but spiritually we didn't step back. The reforms I'm proposing would not apply to those who are here illegal. And we have to remember the country in Congress disrespected more. us the Just way they treated they Obama. From that slave ship, to the White House, we have to determine how we want to applaud that because no white American has been denied that opportunity. Until Smith believes those opportunities are granted, he says he'll continue fighting, starting off his day like he does every morning at the Treme Center. And there's so much more that Smith talked about, including how he knew the three civil rights workers who were killed in 1964 during what was called Freedom Summer. We'll have that and much more from our one-on-one -on -one interview with Jerome Smith on WWLTV.com. A lot of history, and Big Duck is still going. He's still going. It's still such a humble guy. Uh, such an honor to meet him. Thank you, Carice.